So in this video, I'm going to be giving my thoughts on the first two episodes of Marvel's What If series. Warning, I will be talking some spoilers in this video, just because there is no point about talking about this series without mentioning some spoilers, so you have been warned. So this whole Marvel What If series is an animated series showcasing a bunch of what if scenarios in the MCU, how certain stories would play out from a new perspective, all from the viewpoint of one known as The Watcher played by Jeffrey Wright, you know, and one of the scenarios that we get, or the first one I'll talk about in episode one, is Captain Carter, and this one is what would happen if Peggy Carter took the super soldier serum instead of Steve Rogers. The whole thing that triggers this whole scenario is that Peggy Carter, through the simple decision of staying on ground level instead of on the upper level of the whole super soldier serum process, she ends up seeing a sabotage attempt by one of the Hydra people, to which she inter intervenes, Steve Rogers ends up, ends up getting wounded, Peggy ends up taking Taking the super soldier serum out of desperation because they needed to finish the process and she ends up becoming a super soldier a super soldier woman peggy carter who ends up becoming the new captain america the whole thing the whole interesting twist here on this whole scenario is that peggy is a woman and because of this is the 1940s and obviously it's a different time for woman respect if you want to put it that way she has a much tougher time sort of gaining the acceptance of a captain america than even c rogers did in the first uh, captain america the first avenger most of this episode actually does play out the way you ex would expect Peggy has always been a natural fighter as shown by her first scene in Captain America the First Avenger so naturally she ends up being a great super soldier because not only does she have the fighting skills but she's also sort of a naturally good person which helps with the whole super soldier serum affecting her her mind or a person's mind when they do take it so when so she ends up going on to achieve the same sort of level of notoriety as Steve Rogers Captain America his version of Captain America so overall Peggy when she ends up becoming Captain America it doesn't really affect her character too much she's still naturally the same sort of strong person or headstrong person and mentality and her physical form obviously to a greater degree so overall it didn't really affect Peggy that much the thing that I found most interesting is what would happen to Steve Rogers had he not become Captain America because obviously when he's not Captain America or before he became Captain America he was a scrawny little dude and I think the thing that was special about this episode what I did like is the fact that it showed that Steve Rogers is just a naturally great guy and just willing to do anything that to, to help and that he was always sort of destined for greatness in some way after all he was ended up being worthy of lifting more near so yeah it shows that Steve Rogers was always willing to go out there and helped and he, what he ended up doing getting his own Iron Man suit named the Hydro Sp uh, Smash which is sort of a bigger version of the Mark One, and yeah, I really, I really like that it showed that Steve Rogers was just a guy who was always meant to do something special in his life. Something else that I actually liked too was the dynamic between Peggy and Steve. I like that it showed that Peggy would have still had feelings for Steve even without the super soldier body because it is a little shallow in the first film that she doesn't start to sort of really like him like him until he gets sort of the super soldier body so that was cool showing that those two did have some connection even if Steve didn't become sort of a big sort of super soldier person Peggy in the end ends up having a similar fate to Captain uh, Captain America Steve Rogers or Steve Rogers Captain America where she ends up getting lost through time after beating a giant sort of a squid thing through a tesseract wormhole she ends up getting sucked into time into the same place that Loki was in his entrance in Avengers 1 in that underground shield facility and yeah that's where Captain Carter ends up meeting her fate at the beginning of Avengers 1 or that whole scenario in Avengers 1 Overall, I thought this was a solid intro to the What If series. It was the one they were promoting the, mo the most through the trailers. I like the animation. The animation was pretty good. It's different. It's sort of a 3D sort of 2d hybrid kind of thing but it works i thought the action was really good the voice acting was really good it really helped that they got the original actors to come back for these roles overall i would give it a 7 out of 10. what it did make me do is it made me go revisit the agent Car carter tv series that was on abc that ended years ago that was interesting to watch from this new perspective after watching this episode of captain carter and what if and it'll be interesting to see if there's any sort of future plans for Captain Carter to make an appearance in any of the live action movies with the whole multiverse thing sort of taking over. So yeah, overall, this was a solid episode, solid intro to the What If series, and yeah, seven out of 10, I, I thought it was good. The second episode that we got was a scenario showcasing what would happen if T'Challa ended up being picked up by the Ravengers and became the Star-Lord that we saw in the Guardians movies. Now, this was a much anticipated episode by many, mainly due to Chadwick Boseman's passing, and this was really sort of the final credited work that we'll ever see from him and uh yeah for that reason i was actually very surprised
surprised that this episode was not uh, saved for last. It would have been in a sort of an emotional send-off for Bozeman. And it was a very anticipated episode, so I felt like it might have been better to be saved last. Maybe it was done for chronological sequencing that it actually had to be put in this order. Either way, this is where we got it. And this episode showcased just what an amazing character T'Challa is. I mean, immediately you see the difference in how his Star-Lord is respected by that Black Ravenger played by Jiman Hansu, immediately knowing who he is and not going who, as he did to Peter Quill Star-Lord in the first Guardians movies. And it was just amazing and so cool to see just how much of a positive impact his Star-Lord had in the whole galaxy to where now he, Yandu, and the of the Ravengers were partners and got along just fine. Drax's family was alive and well. But the biggest shock was seeing how his Star Lord was able to get Thanos from stopping his whole Infinity War plan by simply talking to the guy. And then Thanos became a lovable member of the team. Now, I didn't watch many trailers for What If. I watched the original trailer, but I really didn't watch sort of anything that came in afterwards with the TV spots. And uh, yeah, I'm really glad I didn't watch any of those because I don't know if this whole Thanos thing was shown in the trailers. Either way, it was just incredible to see Thanos in this new way, this new perspective, where you see him in just this positive way. He's a lovable guy. He's cracking jokes. He sort of knows his mistakes. What he's doing wasn't perfect. Uh, he's got sort of a, a relationship with Nebula now. The two, it's not perfect, but they have a better relationship going on. Nebula, it should be noted, isn't as cyborged out. She has hair now. Her and Thanos make sort of a cool sort of father-daughter team. And yeah, it was just really surreal to see stuff like Thanos fighting the Black Order, you know, Ebony Ma, Proxima Midnight, and those guys from Infinity War and Endgame. Yeah, that was just amazing. And all of this really does paint Peter Quill in a real negative light, if that's even possible, even more possible, after how he fucked up in Infinity War the way he did. All of this really helps, though, in the fact that we are able to get the original actors to come back for these roles. I mean, it was already advertised that we would be getting Bozeman back for this role, for his role, but we got the actors for Yandu back, Thanos back, Nebula back, even a Howard the Duck came back. And it really does help to make what, what, make what you're watching feel like more of a real extension of the universe. The Collector ends up being the real villain of this episode, or the actual villain, with Thanos no longer being the main villain of this whole Marvel Universe. The Collector came in and filled sort of his uh, power vacuum that he left. And he ended up being a pretty good villain at, uh, in the end, when you see his collection of stuff that he ends up having Captain America's shield, Thor's hammer, and Mjolnir. He ends up sort of killing Korg, and you now he has his arm. So like, whoa, the Collector who's just sort of like a sort of eh, sort of throwaway guy in the first film, ended up being a pretty, pretty kick-ass villain in this universe. Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was actually pretty good the way they was doing. And uh, yeah, so that was cool stuff. Ultimately, I liked the direction that the episode went with having T'Challa end up going back home, realizing that his home in Wakanda is where he really belongs. And then we get to see sort of the combination of his cosmic family, the Ravengers, Thanos, and all those guys come together with his Wakanda family. So now that he has both. And that's how the episode ends up ending. I can safely say that I never thought I would have seen a scene where I'd see Thanos having a drink at a Wakanda party, joking about genocide. I mean, all that stuff, all the stuff with Thanos was just amazing to see in this episode. Overall, this truly was a fantastic episode. You know, it had those great surprises that I was talking about, just seeing these characters in a different light. And it had a great emotional story, the stuff with T'Challa and his dad, T'Challa realizing that home was where his belong, his true Wakanda home, but that he can have both with his cosmic family and his Wakanda family. That was beautiful stuff. The animation was solid also. Uh, yeah, just seeing this new perspective around the Marvel Universe was just beautiful. And obviously there was a bit of emotional stuff with seeing uh, or hearing Chadwick Boseman's sort of last role. And uh, yeah, like I said, it really just showcased what an amazing character T'Challa was. So overall, this was a fantastic episode that showed the kind of potential that these what-if scenarios can have, the type of fun they can be. I would give it a 9.5 out of 10. I absolutely loved it. Even more sort of interesting is sort of the tease that we got in, at the end with Ego finding Peter Quill working at a Dairy Queen, the Dairy Queen that we saw from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And uh, that was a real tease because the showcase, uh-oh, now that the Yandu never picked up Peter Quill, Ego was able to find Peter and uh, that can lead to the whole expansion and the whole universe really being sort of destroyed. I really hope we can see that scenario play out eventually in one of these what-if uh, episodes just because that is a pretty big deal. The fact that Ego he came pretty close to sort of fulfilling his plan to sort of basically just take out the whole universe uh, but as the watcher said that's a story for another day but the T'Challa Star-Lord story that we got here fantastic stuff 
So that'll be my thoughts on the first two episodes of Marvel's What If, Captain Carter, and T'Challa Star-Lord. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you for watching.